Okay, so I am back with the Sonoff S20 Smart Outlet here. And uh, yeah, it's time to program it, time to do some hacking. So I'm going to need to solder on a pin header here. Unfortunately, I can't get to the back side of this board, so I'm going to have to figure out how to solder it on top. Uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm going to try to do it here on camera, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to try to just kind of rest it in there. And let's get some solder on there. This is going to be tricky. Oh my god. Uh, I can't find my, my blue tack, but that would be awesome to have right now. Let's see if we can just solder one of these down. I might have gotten that, not sure. Oh, now I've just bridged those two. Let's zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. Yeah. This is going to be tricky. So get the last one. And then the first one here. Okay. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, okay, we have a a short going here. Uh, sorry if the exposure was weird there. Hmm. Okay. I was able to clear the solder out just by using gravity there, uh, holding it at that angle. Okay, so I think those are connected. Uh, I guess we'll find out. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out here and uh, see if I can find my USB to serial adapter. Here we go. So this guy, now this has USB on one end and on the other end we have uh, five volts, ground, TX and RX. Uh, yeah, so the problem is that this is a 3.3 volt device and uh, the only pin here is 5 volts, but there is a 3.3 volt pin on here, so I'm going to need to solder a pin header on here too, so let me grab one of those. Okay, so I just went ahead and soldered some pins onto there and we are good to go, so let's go ahead and just connect this up. We're going to need, uh, let's just keep them in order here. So black is 3.3 .3 volts. Then we're going to do, let's see, what do we have on here? We have VCC, RX, and TX. So then on this side, we're going to go, so, so we're going to need to connect RX to TX and TX to RX. So, Rx is going to go to Tx, and then the next one is Rx on here is going to Tx on here, and then finally ground is over here. So you can see those are all connected. We've got the 3.3 .3 volts over on, on this side right here, and then TX, RX, and ground. So this side is going to get connected up. Uh, since we did that in order, it can just go right down the line with black being VCC. So okay. 
get that plugged in. Okay. Oh, I just hit my microphone there. I hope that wasn't too loud for y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my computer and show you what's going on. Okay, so let's get into the software side of things a little bit now. Uh, today we're going to be using a piece of software called the Sonoff Tasmoda. And this is for some pre-built third-party aftermarket firmware for the Sonoff devices. And it's really well built. It has a, a, a startup Wi-Fi page, so when it can't find... A, or when it can't connect to Wi-Fi on startup, it'll broadcast its own and it'll give you like a little sign-in page that lets you connect it to your home Wi-Fi or whatever you're using. It has built-in support for OTA updates, which means you can, uh, you can, uh, sorry, you can push new firmware to it over the air. You don't need to connect wires up to it every time you want to update the software. And it also supports most importantly to me, MQTT, which is, uh, without getting too far into it, it's a, it's a protocol that can be used for low power devices to send messages to each other. Uh, and, and it doesn't use a lot of bandwidth, but it's very effective for this kind of thing. So, uh, it's, this Tasmodo software supports all kinds of Sonoff devices, including the S20 smart socket, which is what we're using. And you can see here just a little picture of the uh, the basic one. So let's go ahead and get into using this. So you're going to want to go to releases. You click right here. Then download the source code for the latest release. And once you've downloaded it, you're going to get a zip file. And you're going to want to extract that. And you'll get this folder. Now, I'm going to open this folder in my code editor of choice, which is Visual Studio Code, which is mostly a web-focused editor, but it, you can also use it for Arduino programming. And I'll show you how to do that in another short video. But, whoops, we're just going to drop that right in there, open it up in here, and I'm going to be using Platformio, Platformio, to program my Arduino, and that's my preferred way of programming instead of using the Arduino IDE. Uh, but I know a lot of you will want to use the Arduino IDE, and that's just fine. You can use that. But the most important thing here is that you go into your platformio.ini file and uncomment this line. Uh, basically, this tells it which group of, of packages need to get flashed onto the Sonoff device. And the reason you would want to do these other ones, I'm not really sure what this last one is, but the Sonoff Minimal, that is a minimal installation in case you run out of space on the device while you're flashing this one. Then you can do the minimal installation, and that will allow you to uh, uh, do the minimal installation first and then do an over-the-air update to get the full one. But you should have no problem just going straight off with the full, the full version. So go ahead and uncomment that line by deleting the semicolon at the beginning of it. Then save it, and the next thing you're going to want to do is build this. So uh, in the Arduino IDE, you might click the verify button, but here I'm going to go for the platformio build command, and that will compile everything together. Just take a quick moment here. Shouldn't take too long. Now, you may be tempted to go ahead and upload this right away, but there's something you have to do first, and I'm going to switch over to the camera to show you what it is. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, I have the sawn off all connected as we just looked at. And I don't have it connected to power just yet. I have my USB port right here for my computer. So the trick to programming this thing is you have to hold down the button as you connect power, which is a little bit tricky. But, you know, you have lots of fingers, you can do it. So hold the button down, then plug in the USB port, and that'll put it into programming mode. Is that upside down? Come on. There we go. So I held the button down as I plugged it in, and it's now ready to program. So let's go back over to the computer, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're ready to go with the upload. 
So I'm going to go just go ahead and upload it using the, uh, the platformio upload command. And as you can see down here, it's doing a little bit of compilation. And then it auto detects the serial port that we're plugged into. And then it starts uploading it. And this will take a little bit, so I'll go ahead and speed through this. Okay, so that finished here, and we are now ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to the camera and show you what it's doing. So I've taken the saw off, I've put it back together, put the screw back in. It's all one piece again. And I'm going to power it up with AC. So just plug that in. Now, uh, just give it a second to boot up. And once it's done that, uh, I, I don't really know how to tell, but just, you know, give it a few seconds. Then you're going to want to take, oh, that looks like a good sign. So then you're going to want to push this button four times. So one, two, three, four. And then wait for the LED to. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna turn back on. But uh, now I'll go ahead and show you the computer. And uh, ba well, basically what we just did by pushing that button four times is we put it into setup mode. So it's going to be broadcasting a Wi-Fi network to connect to. So uh, Sonoff does have a little page on their wiki here that shows all the button presses that you can do. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just we just did the four short presses to start Wi-Fi Manager. So that's going to broadcast a Wi-Fi network, and we can see it here. It starts with Sun Off. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and that will connect us up. And uh, your computer should recognize that it needs to uh, you need to like sign into the network. But if it doesn't, you can just go to a web browser and do 192.168.4.1. Okay, so as you can see here, it finally loaded. It takes a little while. The thing is not very powerful. Just remember that. So once you're here, you can scan for Wi-Fi networks. And you'll see some Wi-Fi networks. I'm just going to connect to mine, the promised LAN. Type in the password. And if you want to, you can do a secondary one, but I'm not going to do that. You can set a host name, uh, but I'm just going to leave that as default. This, I think, does son off, and then the the dash, then there's going to be the device, like, uh, unique ID. So go ahead and save that, and it will now restart and try to connect to the Wi-Fi. So after a moment, the device will connect to your Wi-Fi network that you specified, and you'll want to connect your computer back up to that Wi-Fi network, too. So. At this point, uh, you should uh, you should recall the name of the Wi-Fi network that you connected to earlier of the device, and uh, I know I forgot to mention that in the video, but hopefully I'll remember to add a caption later, some text over. So, you know, uh, go ahead and, and and if you and if you didn't remember the name of the Wi-Fi network, just push the button four times on the front of the sun off and it will start broadcasting the Wi-Fi network again so you can get the name. And once you've done that, you're going to want to type that in to your URL bar. So that would be this part right here. Then do dot local and then a forward slash. And that will that will let you go to the sun off's web page. And in here we have all kind of kinds of configuration options that I'm not going to get into today, but you can toggle it on and off if you want to test it out. And I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but uh, it is toggling on and off. And there's some configuration stuff. There's actually a lot of configuration stuff. Let's see if it loads. Yep, here we go. So there's all kinds of stuff you can configure. It's good stuff. Uh, view some information. Firmware upgrade, there's a console, I'm not sure what you would do with a console, but uh, feel free to look around in here and play around, and yeah, have fun with home automation. Thanks for watching.